Okay, maybe we start. Um, so, about today's lecture, so let's try to keep it short. Uh, one of the tasks for today is to have sparkling at two. Uh, so there are some awards uh, given for open science to certain GIS professor uh, and, and others who have been successful doing GIS in this country. So at two o'clock there will be at least sparkling, maybe some cake and stuff. Uh, so let's aim so that we, we can make it there and let's try to uh, kind of go through the materials swiftly. Uh, so today's topics are here. So what we will do today uh, is basically uh, to go through uh, data classification. So there are quite a few cases when you need to kind of classify uh, your data based on certain criteria. Uh, quite typical things to do this is, for example, if you have a raster data and, and certain kind of continuous values in, in that data set, and then you want to kind of have certain classes uh, for, for those continuous values to, to make it more kind of uh, apparent what, what kind of patterns you might have in, in that data. So we start by that and then we go and, and check uh, another set of quite useful uh, GIS tricks. So we will go and, and see how we can do certain geometric operations. So already last week we did did few of them. So for example, point in polygon and these kind of things. Uh, this week we will uh, see how to do overlay analysis. So how to kind of intersect to uh, layers together and, and clip, for example, uh, from certain uh, polygon layer, uh, certain parts based on another layer. So that kind of thing. And then we will see how you can do some spatial aggregation. So aggregate data based on certain features. So similar things that we, what we have done already in Pandas using the group by function, but now we will do that with the spatial data. And then we have the exercise for where you can uh, kind of practice these things a little bit. Yeah, but let's start. So as I said, so data reclassification is the first topic. And of course, uh, when classifying data uh, to certain classes, uh, what, what you're basically doing there is that you, want, you have certain kind of uh, criteria uh, what you base, uh, what you have to, to classify the data. Uh, here we have some uh, simple example of what uh, classification might be from, from real world, from, for example, from this, uh, from this week. And so if available space in a pub is less than the space in my wardrobe and the temperature outside is warmer than my beer. If, you, if these things are true, you uh, might go and drink the beer outside. If not, you might enjoy the beer inside at the table. So these, just to demonstrate that the criteria can really be whatever, uh, and, and you can make them yourselves. And, and for that purpose, knowing how to do functions and how to do, uh, how to use those to classify data and use conditional statements and so on are really, really useful. And we will see how we can do that. So uh, what we will do today in the first part is that we will use this uh, Korean land cover layer data uh, from year 2012 and, and basically classify uh, the, that data. And what we are interested in there is just a simple example where we want to classify lakes into a big and small small ones uh, based on some criteria and the second example is uh, another we will work with another data set uh, with this travel time matrix data uh, from Helsinki region where we basically try to find 
good locations to buy an apartment uh, where the from such area that has uh, good public transportation accessibility to to city center but from location that is a bit further away from the city center where the prices are um, assumably uh, lower so that you can actually afford that apartment so this kind of really practical example how how we can use uh, classifications to do it and then the third one that we will cover is to uh, show you how you can use these ready-made classifiers from this Paisel module uh, to class to classify travel times into multiple classes already last week we saw uh, this example of using the uh, natural breaks classification uh, to classify the values in of, of a uh, data set uh, for our visualization so those are the topics of the first part and and let's start by again downloading some data so there is a link in the website uh, that has this data.zip folder so what i will do is that i just download it and then i extract it so let's see what do we have so indeed we have this data and in this folder we have three different data sets so as said we have this Corin 2012 data set for the Uusima region in southern Finland then we have the borders of Helsinki which is uh, another layer that we will use and then uh, the final layer is uh, this kind of shape file with travel times to railway stations. So it's uh, this kind of grid, gridded uh, polygon layer that we will use. So that's kind of data and let's start. And what we want to do first is that we want to kind of start classifying this uh, land cover layer data, so this Corine 2012. And let's open the spider. I happen to have it open already. Uh, but basically, again, the first things that we want to do is that we want to import the uh, modules that we want to use. Make this a little bit larger. So I import the GeoPandas and then i want to also import matplotlib so that we can maybe use it for doing some maps and then i need to of course define the file path for my data so i create a variable called fp so file path and then what I do again is that I go to this folder where I have all these data sets and I copy and paste the folder path and then I copy and paste the Cori 2012 shape uh, file name and add it there and now I should have a proper proper file path to the file that I want to read in and of course the next thing what I what we want to do is really that we want to read the data so data equals to gpd read file and then fp and then I want to execute these things again with f9 you can in inspire execute these lines one by one and now Let's see. So now we have the data uh, in in GeoPandas and in, in Spider, and let's see what do we have. So I use this head again to just check the uh, files that I have or the the columns that I have. So what we have here are these attributes called level one, level one ing, level one su. So the what we have is that we have different kind of uh, uh, abstraction levels uh, included uh, and what these different 
level one, level two, level three, basically uh, what they describe are different kind of uh, land covers. And let's do so that because we have these English names and, and this SUO which is finished, so let's just select those uh, those columns that have information in English because the Finnish ones are unnecessary for us. So let's select some columns. So what I do is that I again create a list of those columns that I want to use. I can check the column names by defining data.columns and then copy and paste that list here and then I just remove these Finnish names from here. If you are following you don't need to do this it's not necessary I just to do will do it so that the materials stay more readable. Then I create that list and then what I do is that I uh, select only those columns and how we were able to select columns is that we specify data equals to data and then inside these square brackets we uh, specify the list of columns that we want to include in our in our data frame and now we should have only those columns that we just picked yes um, what we could do is to to plot this data set but instead of doing that to save some time I will just show you what this data look like. So this is basically what we have in, in our data set. So we have this uh, Uusima region, so the kind of uh, yeah region next to, to Helsinki, which is here. And then with different colors here, we have different uh, land use cover types uh, in, in different parts. So this is how our data looks like. Uh, in here so uh, but what could be useful of course is that we we kind of now saw what our data looks like but it would be really good to know uh, what kind of land covers do we have available uh, so uh, let's explore the land use types so what we can basically uh, utilize for seeing what basically what kind of values we have in in these level two and and level three uh, descriptions is that we can take use of this unique function in in pandas and, and geopandas, which basically will list uh, only uh, one time each of these descriptions that we have in the data. We can take a look that uh, our the length of our data is six and a half thousand rows more or less so there is quite a bit of data but let's see how many unique different unique uh, descriptions for this level three English we have in the data. How we can do that is that I just create descriptions uh, variable and then what I do is that I call list and then I set that data level 3 in so take that column and, and the values from there and list all the uh, unique values in there I might not want to uh, disable the da, 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 da. well maybe we can manage so 
yeah so what we have here is that i want to list all the unique values from this level 3 english and i place them inside a list to actually get the full view from them so then we can basically print the descriptions and we will see so here we basically have all different kind of uh, uh, features or land covers types uh, in in the column so we have some uh, peat box bare rock uh, urban fabric transitional woodland and and so on uh, what we are interested in here uh, as i said in the beginning we want to classify lakes into big and small ones uh, which is just one example of what you can basically do uh, so we are interested to take and take only these water bodies so if the description says water bodies it, it basically has all the waters in the in the region so let's select those rows that has, has that kind of information uh, again we can take uh, uh, and use uh, already quite familiar function for us to the x uh, functionality in, in pandas to select those so let's select water bodies they are basically lakes and, and, and some rivers maybe as well so what I do is that I create a new variable called lakes and then from that data I select such rows where the data level 3 English description equals to these water bodies so I can actually copy and paste that from there and put it inside here so and then what I want to do is that I use this dot copy to create a, a full copy out of, of that data frame instead of to have just a view from from it so yeah then again we get some deprecation warnings we don't need to worry about that but let's see what do we have now in our lakes so it seems that yes now we have only the water bodies it seems that we have inland waters uh, in here so now we have the lakes in in our data set okay um, next what we want to do is that we want to uh, calculate the area of the lake so we will use the area uh, of a lake to basically define if it's a big one or a small one and how we define a big lake uh, and, and small lake is that we basically calculate the average and then if it's larger than the average then it's a big one and, and, and the vice versa if I remember right yeah that is what we do so uh, let's first calculate the area of the lakes so how we can do that uh, is basically we create a new column called area and then who wants to shout uh, how can I actually calculate the area exactly yes so lakes.area so this is the really simple uh, attribute that is stored uh, in our data frame to actually get the area of those polygons so now we should have that area as a new column uh, somewhere yeah it is there just a bit yeah here it is uh, what these uh, measures here are so how can we know that uh, any suggestions yes good so 
by checking the coordinate reference system, we can see what are the units, for example, here. We can see that this is the Finnish uh, metric coordinate system uh, with meters. So what we have here are basically the values are square meters and the numbers are, of course, fairly big. So what we want to do uh, is that we convert those square meters into square kilometers so that they are a bit easier to, to read and understand. So how we can do that is that we basically just create uh, convert meters, square meters to square kilometers. So let's just create a new uh, column called area underscore km2 and how we can convert this is just that we divide those meters by is it one million I think it is so if we want to convert from square meters to square kilometers we want to uh, divide those values with one million and now we should have a new column with the square kilometer values from these and they are much easier to to read and understand cool uh, then uh, as said we want to classify to big and small legs all these values and we want to use the criteria to classify them as the the average size so let's see what it is so let's calculate the mean size of the legs so lake mean size equals two legs and let's use the uh, square kilometer uh, column to do that and how we were able to calculate the mean is of course this nice function dot mean and let's see what do we have mean size so it seems that the mean size of the lakes in this Helsinki or the Uusimaa region in Finland seems to be 1.58 square kilometers so not really large lakes seems that we have here but still fairly fairly nice uh, then okay so now we have the uh, mean size and now we want to use that to classify our data so what we want to do uh, is that first we basically create a, this kind of binary classifier uh, which is basically a simple classifier that uh, only gives a value either a zero or one if it's a small lake it gives the value zero and if it's a large one it gives you a value one and these binary classifications are quite uh, quite often used in in some uh, fields and applications such as when doing some uh, prioritizing work uh, in, in conservation science for example so let's create a binary classifier uh, how many of you are comfortable of doing these functions already are they more or less yeah fairly okay okay so this should be quite straightforward so you already know that how we can use these classifier or these functions in in pandas so again we first define the name of the function then we basically as a first parameter we basically uh, feed the, the row in our data frame then we say some uh, uh, give some parameters so we want to specify what is the source column so which column should we use as an input data uh, where the data comes for for the um, classifier then we want to specify uh, as a result to which 
column uh, we want to uh, pass the result so let's specify an output column and then let's say uh, give a third column which is threshold so this threshold is basically the information that we want to use as a criteria to classify in our case now the lake either as big or small one but of course we could use um, whatever measure and the source column and the output column could also be be basically whatever so what we are actually doing here is to make a rather generic uh, classifier that you could use basically for whatever purpose if you want to classify your data into two different classes so let's so if the area of the input geometry is lower than the thresh, uh, threshold value give the uh, as a result value zero so let's create uh, that kind of criteria and of course what we are doing here is that we use the conditional statements to do that so if the area is larger no is lower uh, than the threshold value so if row so again so this is the where our, all our data comes from and the source column so this is basically what we need to pass for the function so if that is smaller than the threshold so what we have here indeed is that we the threshold should be a number that we feed into this function and then if this is true so let's uh, update the output column with value zero so this is how we define it and then again we want to update uh, something in the row so output call equals to zero and this value of course could be whatever but we define it here as as zero so that we have this zero uh, or one classification in, in our data and basically because we have this binary classifier uh, we don't need to check if if the value is smaller the only opposite that we can have here is that it is larger uh, or equals to that one so what we have here is that we just can use this L statement so if our data equals to the threshold or, or is larger than it then the output column will uh, ha will have value one in, in it so if the value is larger or equals equal to the threshold uh, give value one and then as a last thing as we are having a function so of course function always needs to need to return something so what we want to return here is the row of data that we feed into this this function so this is something i guess that you have done quite a few times already so it should be uh should be already in a quite you should know it quite well already and then I basically execute this function and now we can start using it so let's first uh, create uh, a new column for our uh, data frame where we will have the results for for our classification so let's create a column for the classes so I just make a column called uh, well this is a not that good name but small big uh, so maybe I add class here so that it's maybe a bit more intuitive so let's create an empty column there and now we should have it let's check indeed we have the new column with none in there and now how we were able to 
use that function uh, who wants to give the function to use that function in pandas what is how can we use functions in pandas with apply. apply yeah we want to apply that function of our own to to the data frame so use the binary classifier with apply function so let's do so that we say that lakes equals to lakes dot apply and now what we need to do uh, so as a first parameter into this apply function we need to specify that what is the function that we actually want to use and, and apply to our data frame so in our case it's the binary classifier and remember that you shouldn't put the parentheses inside here which is uh, how you would do in, in normally with, with Python but this apply basically doesn't want you to use use that uh, those parentheses then we need to specify some values to our parameters so for the source column output column and threshold so as the source column, so the column that has all the data uh, that we want to pass to the function is this area, uh, square kilometer area. So we use that. So that is our source column. Uh, and I want to put that correctly. And as the output column, we can pass the name that we just created. So it's this small big class. So this column will, will have the results from our classifier. And then uh, as a threshold, so what do we want to, what is the value that we want to use uh, to classify? So that is the uh, lakes mean size as we discussed. So let's pass this L underscore mean underscore size as a threshold. So threshold, no threshold equals to L mean size and it should be there and again the important thing that might some every now and then uh, be forgotten is the axis equals to one so this is the parameter that we also need to uh, specify for this apply function so that it goes row by row instead of column by column so by this we can execute our function and now it didn't take long and now what we should have is that we have this new small big class uh, values here we can basically uh, we can check how many zeros, so how many small lakes we have instead of large ones. And a nice function for checking that is this uh, lakes small big class. And there is the is it count no value count. Yes, so this kind of function, I remember it correctly. So we can basically calculate how many different values we have. And it seems that we seem to have 188 lakes that were classified as small ones. So number zero and 44 big lakes that were classified with value one. So that's basically how we can do it and as a result again I just well it shouldn't take too long let's let's plot uh, these lakes so lakes dot plot and column equals to small big class and let's put a color map as seismic so there are different kind of color maps that you can use and well it's so small that you cannot 
see it so maybe I show it from here um, here we have so this is what we got uh, it doesn't show too well but the the red ones are were classified as big lakes and the blue ones are the the smaller ones and you can it's you can barely see them but it seems that indeed now we we have these big and small lakes classified so that was an example a uh, simple example how we can create a self-made classifier uh, using the the typical function uh, function to do it and and it's fairly straightforward uh, the next thing what we want to do uh, is that we want to create another function uh, as we discussed in the beginning so what we want to do now is that we want to find a good location to buy an apartment in, in, in Helsinki so we want to find such locations where with with good public transportation accessibility to city center but that are further away from the city center uh, where the prices would be lower so that's what we want to do next and basically we can kind of continue uh, from what we had already so we basically well I, I can now copy and paste so uh, we could kind of modify the one that we have there I just now take this from here to, to save a little bit of time and copy and paste it here uh, usually when you have functions in your script you actually add it at them into the beginning of, of the script so that's kind of uh, how things should be done so a good code of conduct so to say so here we now have the binary classifier and now we have this custom classifier too uh, the name is maybe not that <laughs> that good uh, but basically what we have here is really similar but now instead of having one kind of uh, column and, and threshold we have two so we have source column one so this could be basically uh, whatever but if the source column uh, and is lower than the threshold one it gets a certain value uh, if source call two is uh, larger than this it gets a first uh, certain value so indeed what we want to find uh, are such uh, rows where the uh, kind of accessibility is lower than certain threshold and the distance uh, from the city center is larger than certain threshold and what we use uh, as the uh, kind of parameters here um, ba, 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 let's see well let's continue um, so first of all what we want to do is that okay in the materials we seem to have this geojson that we will read in but i think i have uh, a shape file here so we can actually read that in instead of the geojson uh, it would be really easy to read that as well as you can read from the uh, from the materials read the shape file so uh, first of all multi criteria classifier so I just these here uh, so again uh, accessibility file path equals to so I will read that data that we have in here and I just copy and paste the file path and put it here 
And then what I will do is that I basically read that data into pandas or geo pandas uh, to file acc equals to gpd dot read file so again that familiar function that we use and the file that we want to use is this accfp variable and the file path in there and we need to first define it and then we can read it in so let's check what do we have acc dot head so indeed we seem to have some kind of polygon layer here and with these different variables uh, in 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 the data frame so we have this car md car mt car rd car rt and this public transport md and so on uh, what do these actually mean uh, is that well you can read the full description of these attributes from there is a link here uh, I will show you so they come from this Helsinki region travel time matrix and here we have so for example the uh, PTRTT so that column basically has travel time from the origin uh, kind of cell to destination cell by public transport in rush hour traffic and the other one uh, this PTMTT which might be useful is the same thing but with midday traffic and so on and the important uh, column for us is as well the PTRD so the distance in meters of the public transportation route in rush hour traffic so we wanted to use the distance so we want to be uh, uh, far away from the city center where the prices are low but still from places where it is actually fairly fast to get into the city center so these two uh, variables are the key columns in our data so uh, let's see uh, yeah actually one important thing that is mentioned in the data somewhere here so in the data set that we have there are some no data values and they have been stored with uh, a value minus one so what we want to do is that we actually want to kind of uh, remove those uh, those cells from our data that has such uh, columns so what we can do is basically that we can for example select only those rows that has values larger than zero so let's do that uh, so I just well I can read it so we'll write it so select uh, rows where travel times are larger larger or equal to zero so we exclude those no data values so let's say acc equals to acc dot x so this is the function that we can use and we specify that uh, for example the public transport rush hour time uh, is larger than or equals to zero so this is a simple uh, simple command and now we should have let's see now we shouldn't have any uh, zero or any minus one values in this ptr tt column here and we can move forward so um what we want to do so maybe let's just first check the data what it looks like i could again plot it but to save some time i just show it from the web so this is what the data looks like yeah, quite horrible map but you can see that we have the city center of helsinki here and the red color shows that the travel time to 
the city center. So this uh, data basically shows travel times to the railway station of, of Helsinki. And the uh, re more red the area, the, fa more, the faster it is to reach that place. So of course we are fairly, it's quite red close to that place. And then we have these certain areas here where it is fairly fast also which are basically the metro stations in here and to the north direction we have the railway stations so just this is the data that we have so that you understand so indeed now what we wanted to do is that we want to take advantage of of, of this kind of data and find those places where the uh, distance is fairly the, the kind of distance in, in meters is fairly high uh, but the travel time is is uh, uh, fairly fairly small so um, yeah so yeah that was this is the public transportation uh, data that we have here uh, there is another map in the website this shows the walking distance from the city center and it looks like of course this kind of round round thing as walking distance is not e euclidean but quite close to it so we have this round uh, pattern in in our data so these two uh, vari variables we want to use to classify it and what we do here is that we uh, let's create a column called suitable area uh, for for our data set so create a column for our classification so uh, let's say ACC equal uh, column suitable area and uh, let's just create an empty column like this and then uh, we had this function that I just copy and paste it so with this function it's really easy to determine uh, so that the source column one uh, is uh, smaller than the threshold and source column two should be larger than the threshold two so we can use that to actually find those those places where the travel time is small and the air, uh, distance to city center is uh, high. So uh, classify the data based on our criteria. So let's say ACC equals to ACC, and again we use the apply function. Actually, make sure that I have executed this function so I just select those rows and then with F9 I have it in my IPython console and then I want to use that custom classifier uh, again with tabulator key you can automatically fill the, uh, the letters so that you don't need to write every one every letter in your uh, code so the source column one, so now the source column one needs to be lower than something. So we wanted that the public transport uh, time is lower than, than a certain criteria. And what is the criteria that we use here? So we specify a suitable place for us where the travel time is lower or equal to 20 minutes. So we want to be 20 minutes apart from the city center, but such places that would be uh, further than four kilometers away from the city center. So just, and this could be of course anything, but this is what we choose in, in here. So we say that the public transport rush hour uh, travel time is the source column one and the uh, threshold one. So what it should be, so it should be this 20 minutes. 
So let's say that the threshold for this column is 20. And then the source column 2 uh, is the walking distance. So with this walk D, uh, we have the walking distance from that location, so from this uh, railway station. So we said walk D, and we want that uh, the walking distance from the railway station should be uh, higher than 4000 meters. So we specify the value 4000 in here. And that's it. We still need to specify what is the output column. So we want to save these results to the suitable area column that, yes. Yeah, that's good. Thank you. Threshold to. Yeah, thank you. Now we are on the right track. Uh, yeah, so we need to specify the output column and then the last act, uh, parameter again, we need to specify that the axis equals to one. So row by row, we classify these things. And now again, we should uh, source call to okay what is the ah okay no mm, there is some threshold one threshold two source call one source call two Uh, yes, this is C2, yes, that's it, and now, yep, now it started doing, and now what we have, again, we seem to have uh, this suitable area with zeros and ones, and again, okay, so actually what the data here is that all these different cells, so they are 250 meters square grids uh, in the data set. So let's see how many uh, suitable uh, columns did we have in the in the region. So again, we can take use the ACC and suitable area uh, count values function. Is it value counts? Uh, yes. So the value counts function, and it seems that okay, well, there are not too many uh, appropriate places for us that kind of fits the criteria that we have, but there are some. So this is, of course, interesting information. So, what are those places that meet? Uh, meet this criteria that we have. Uh, we could plot the suitable area here and as a result we basically have this kind of map. So the purple area all these are basically uh, non-suitable areas but we have certain places with this yellow uh, color that are suitable. So these seems to be nice areas where the uh, travel time with public transport to the city center is uh, small uh, or low, really low. So 20 minutes by maximum, uh, but the distance is further away. So actually the place where I live, so in Hertoniemi seems to be quite nice, <laughs> quite some location to be. And, and I agree. Uh, yeah. So it might be that I use this <laughs> information to find an apartment or maybe not. But anyway, so this is what we have. So as you saw, uh, you could basically in this way just create whatever kind of criteria uh, you have for your own purposes and your own kind of needs. Uh, use them and, and apply and you can 
find out info uh, interesting information from your data. So that's the first part. Uh, then to the next topic, uh, we still continue with the classification stuff, uh, but now just shortly to demonstrate uh, how these uh, ready-made classifiers can be used. So this PyCell module that we already mentioned uh, last uh, week uh, is a really, really nice module with all sorts of uh, nice GIS functionalities. Uh, one uh, nice function that they have indeed are these kind of uh, different classification methods that you can use. So these are really familiar for you whenever doing visualization in quantum GIS or ArcGIS. So you can use, for example, the natural breaks to classify the data uh, and, and have certain kind of visualizations. Uh, there, are, there are lots of different kinds of them. And, and we will now see how you can actually take advantage of, of these in Python. Uh, which makes it makes it easy to create nice nice visualizations uh, one really handy one is also this user defined so it's fairly easy to just create your own class breaks and and, and basically classify your data uh, for example if you have travel time information well to city, uh, city center for example as we had here you could basically define like five minutes classes to have have that kind of uh, classes in your uh, visualization. So uh, let's continue uh, and see how we can use that Python. Uh, I will create a new script so just will uh, so first thing again uh, what you want to do is, uh, of course, import the PyCell package. And PyCell is usually abbreviated with the PS. So we want to shorten it to this one. And I just uh, copy and paste these here. So, or save it to here. So L4 uh, classification PyCell. So uh, let's see how we can use it. So again, the first thing, of course, is that we want to import this module. Uh, the kind of whenever doing these classifications and for doing the visualizations, of course, you always kind of play around with the uh, fact like how many classes do you use and, and how do you find the appropriate class breaks and, and so on. So it's always a bit of testing. Of course, it's nice if you have certain uh, like really good uh, kind of uh, criteria, uh, what you are based on your your decisions. But for many purposes, if you just want to create a nice map, you might just try and find out what works the best. So first, what we want to do is that we want to define uh, the number of uh, classes. Uh, what we will, by the way, now do is that we continue using the same accessibility data. So I already have it in in my IPython console, so I don't need to actually import it or read it in. Uh, just that you are aware of it. So I want to classify my data into nine different classes. So I just first uh, create a variable called number of classes equals to nine. And then uh, how we can basically take use of these uh, PISL classifications. So let's see, there should be, there's a user guide getting started and there should be somewhere here uh, maybe the fastest thing is to just search for natural breaks yeah so there is this map classify uh, 
page here. Well, not maybe that one. Corporate map classification. So there is information basically uh, about how to use these things. So if you are interested in uh, reading more, just go ahead to the documentation of Python and read more information here. Uh, but basically, how we can how we can use uh, these classes is to use these. Oh, no, I want to use make. So here we have this uh, function called make. So what it does is that it configures and creates a classifier that will consume data and produce classifications, given the configuration options specified by this function. So what we will do is that we basically use this make function to first initialize the function that we will use. So it's basically doing a similar thing that we did before when we created our own function. Uh, so we use this make to basically kind of initialize the classifier in, in Python. So we can do it like this. So we basically say that classifier equals to Python natural breaks dot make. And then as an input parameter, it has this K. So how many classes? And we basically uh, feed the number of classes that we chose. So nine in here. And that's how we can basically uh, initialize uh, our classification. So let's do it. So uh, initialize uh, natural breaks classifier and so we create this classifier uh, variable and for this we basically specify that we want to use this natural breaks and then we want to use the make function and then we want to specify that how many classes do we have uh, well it's that nine that we defined there so i just specified that n classes and now we should have let's do it and now we have this classifier here so what we can see when we actually just call it so it's a function this kind of map classifier uh, function from Python. so we can just see that it's that kind of uh, object that we have and then uh, how we can classify the data uh, is that we basically just call our classifier. Uh, so let's classify the data. So let's create a new variable called classifications. So this variable will basically contain the new classes for our data. So let's say that what we want to classify, so we say that ACC so this is the accessibility data that we had and we want to classify so you could classify multiple different uh, columns at the same time uh, but we want to classify only uh, a single one maybe I just do it so so let's create um, columns to classify so let's say PD RTT. So this is the public transportation travel times at rush hour that we want to classify. And I execute that. And basically, then we said that from this ACC, uh, take those columns that we want to classify. So inside square brackets, we insert that list. And then we use that same old apply function. And inside here, we actually just feed the classifier that we want to apply with the GeoPandas. And this should now produce something. Let's see. It takes a few seconds. Yeah, hopefully not much more than that uh, to do this. Hmm. 
yeah now it went through so it took a, took a while we had some 14,000 uh, rows in our data so it took took a while but now what we have so we created these classifications and let's see uh, what do we have so indeed now we have a new data frame with these uh, new reclassified values so they are basically numbers from 0 to 9 that we have we can take a look uh, classifications dot uh, count values always remember it from value counts no mm. Oh yeah, that's true. That's true. That is true. Thanks for pointing it out. Yes, and then it's count values or value counts. <laughs> yeah, I really know what I'm doing. Uh, so yeah, so now we can see uh, what we have. So indeed, the original data that we had uh, had some, basically, some travel time. So this is, for example, 139 minutes. And what we ended up with the new uh, reclassifications of our own. So now, basically, the classifier had basically went through the data and tried to find the natural breaks in our data frame. And, and it has basically found uh, 2,400 uh, values or, or rows in our data frame that goes to this uh, class 1, uh, class 2, and so on. And, and basically what we have here is that, as we defined, that you should classify it automatically to nine different classes. So we actually have nine different uh, values in our this classification. Of, of, of the data. Uh, but as we can see, uh, the data is now in a, in a different data frame. So what we want to do is that we want to join that reclassification back to our original data. Uh, and how we can do that? Uh, first of all, the, uh, let's say classification head. So first of all, this is the same uh, name, the, the, the name of the column is the same that we used for doing the, uh, as, as the input data for our classifier. So what we want to do is that we actually want to change the column name uh, to such name that would basically describe that what kind of classifier we have used here and, and then basically the same stuff. So let's do so that we actually uh, rename our column and how we can do that. Rename the column of the classified data. So let's say classifications dot columns equals to. And as said, we want to say that what kind of classifier was used. So let's say that NB, which is equals to natural breaks, and then the original uh, original column name after that. So in this, this way, we can actually kind of understand also later on that what we, did we actually do here. And now we should have uh, that kind of, that kind of, data column name yes and now uh, what we want to do uh, we can do it in a similar manner so the uh, how the classifier works so that the order of the rows uh, stays the same it remains the same as in the original one so again we can use this data frame dot join to actually take the, the column back to our original data frame so let's 
uh, showing the data, the classified data back to original data frame. So let's say that ACC equals to ACC dot join. And then here we say that what do we want to join? Well, it's the classifications. And this ACC join basically uses the indices to join the data back. And now when we take a look, now we have this uh, new column with the classified values in our, in our data frame. So, of course, now what we want to do is that we want to see how these columns have been made. Uh, again, just to save time, I don't do the plotting. You could do the plots yourself if you're interested. But this is the output. Uh, so basically what we have now is that we have actually those uh, classes uh, from 0 to, to, to 8, so in total 9 different classes, and these are the values. So this is the kind of results from the uh, classifications, uh, classification using natural breaks. And you can try out different ways of doing the classifications yourself. There are plenty of different ones available. Uh, and basically with the uh, geopandas.plot and when we were uh, we in the earlier materials it was possible to do the classification uh, it might be actually here as well uh, so for example this scheme uh, equals to fisher Jenks. so actually this uh, using these classifications so they are nicely integrated into a geopandas plotting function like in, inside it so you don't necessarily need to do this but in some cases if you're visualizing the data but in some cases you might actually want to have the actual data values in your data frame and this is where you actually want to uh, use this pie to do 